Today I'm going to Long Island, the place where people say things like Mario Brothers, and the reason I'm doing that is mainly to pick up some video games. First I'm heading into Manhattan to pick up some games there, but after that, Long Island time baby, that's what I'm doing. Bad voiceover aside, I gotta say this, my buddy actually gave me an arcade one-up. This particular one is made by a company named Clout. My biggest thing and my biggest concern is once I set it up, I've got a full arcade. I've already got a Qbert machine and low key, I don't know what to do with it. Enough about that arcade machine, let's go to a video game store. The name of this mall is Broadway Commons and it's located in Hicksville, New York. So the name of this store is Video Game Trading Post. There's actually about four of these on Long Island. And to be completely honest, initially, I was only planning to go to one of them. Right off the bat, they've got a wonderful copy of Parappa the Rappa 2. The music in this game is goaded. I don't collect stuffed animals, but every single time I see more and more, I want to collect them. I don't own an Atari Lynx, but I one day want to. And I already have the larger version of this case, so I'm gonna ask how much it is. They have so much stock at this store, it's one of those places you could go to and probably just spend like an hour looking through one console. Now I actually went to the store pretty early in the morning and something happened there uh, that I really wanna share with you. There was this older gentleman that came in, he was about the age of somebody's grandpa. Well anyways, he had an Xbox there that he wasn't sure how to use. I could tell that he probably bought the Xbox to, you know, connect with his grandkids or something like that. Well anyways, this store associate was helping this older man for like 45 minutes, just taking him through all of the different ways an Xbox works, and it was just so nice of him. I'm not gonna lie, the old guy reminded me a lot of my wife's late grandpa who, uh, you know, would always call me for tech support. I just really appreciate when somebody goes above and beyond for somebody, even when they don't have to. Well, anyways, back to the video games. If I ever wanna go for a complete N64 in box set, I know where to come. They have a whole bunch of Japanese stuff here, and I am looking for N64, but I'm gonna leave the Japanese stuff here because I'm going to Japan soon. Apparently the reason this gray cart is so much more expensive than the black cart is because it shipped with a bug that wouldn't allow you to finish it in co-op mode. The gray cart will. I'm not trying to get too many heavy hitters today, but it looks like near the end of my collection of N64 games, I'll probably be back here. For now, they actually have a ton of reasonably priced common games, so I think I'll pick those up. I keep mentioning that I'm going to go to Japan soon, but uh, one thing that I wanted to mention is that while I'm in Japan, I'm gonna try to round out the rest of my Wii U collection. There's three Wii U games here right now that I don't have, and even though they're Japanese, I'm gonna pick them up right now, because it's actually kind of hard to find Wii U games even in Japan. This was an absolutely solid video game store. Maybe I came at the right moment in time, but I absolutely loved it. And uh, you know what? They don't have to provide customer service like that, but they did, so. This place is great and you should really go. I got three new Japanese Wii U games and a variant, plus three common N64 games and a heavy hitter. I also had a big Lynx bag, so I got that little Lynx bag to put in my big Lynx bag. I like the bag, it's a cool Lynx bag. Fun facts about Long Island. Now at the beginning of Long Island on the left, that's where uh, Brooklyn and Queens are. If you go all the way to the other end, that's where the Hamptons are. And in the middle, that's where we're going. That's where a lot of the malls are and a lot of the video game stores. Now I'm just throwing this out there. The name of this show is Flip and Dip. What we're trying to do is go to a hundred video game stores. A lot of those video game stores are gonna be smaller mom and pop shops. And the reason we're trying to do that is because it's good to you know highlight small businesses that are supporting the video game community. Now I'm just throwing this out there. Uh, I'm trying to get my complete N64 set while we're doing all this, and hopefully I can get a couple games here and there. But uh, already we've started off well. Let's keep on going and let's uh, just roll through it, man. And as usual, the name of that show is Flip and Dip. This video game trading post is right down the road from Hicksville in Levytown. Now this particular video game trading post was the first one I ever went to. I actually went here because I was uh, visiting my friend T who lived out there on Long Island. I'm always looking out for the Green Lantern DVD version of Scribble Knots Unmasked, but sometimes I'll find a library version instead. That's fun. They have a very wide variety of common games that I still haven't picked up yet, which is great for me. As I get older, I really just appreciate handheld games more and more. I just like the experience of being able to pick up a game and just play wherever you want. But as a kid, I also enjoyed handhelds, mainly because they were just cheaper. As a kid, my sister had a Game Boy and my brother had a Game Gear. I had Tiger Electronics. This wasn't my parents favoring them or anything like that, it was just I wasn't very careful as a kid. And as I got older, my brother and sister gave me their games. I know I'm going for a loose set of N64 games, but by golly, N64 boxes are so cool. 
Fun fact, this game was actually exclusive to Blockbuster, but only for a little bit. It got a wider release. I don't have real rules on how I'm collecting these N64 games, but what I am doing is trying to get them under price charting. In Japan, they released a Game Boy called the Game Boy Light. Uh, I find it very funny that this is super tiny and is also called the Light Boy. If you're into CIB, they've got CIB for days. I'm mainly buying this set for games to play, so I don't really care too much about condition, but obviously, if I can get a pretty uh, cartridge for cheap, I'm definitely going to pick it up. They've got these blind box Pikachus, but they look a little bit suspicious to me. Like, I don't personally think that Nintendo made an anti-social social club Pikachu. I can't help myself, I'm going to pick up a whole bunch of these. They make very good use of every single square inch in the store, however the prices aren't quite as good. Overall, still a great store, worth checking out. I got two commons and an uncommon N64 game to add to the collection. This next game store is called East End Gaming, and it's out there in Oakdale, New York. I know this is a common thing, but I love a good deal. I appreciate weird and uncommon consoles more and more. The uh, TurboGrafx-16 filled with really fun games. Uh, a lot of them I might be priced out of, but I really, really love the way that this console is branded. Like I would love to see some streetwear uh, just designed in the general graphics pattern of TurboGrafx-16. I think honestly that goes double or even triple for Virtual Boy, and I really want a complete Virtual Boy set. Now completely and totally unironically, I really love of the Virtual Boy. And you know, it kind of reminds me of this concept I've been thinking about a lot. I think there's like a lot of video games that people have only interacted with uh, in a secondhand sort of way. Now the Virtual Boy is universally panned, but I would say not a lot of people have actually played it. And that's why I think a lot of video game information is secondhand, uh, because people don't experience it for themselves, they just hear about it from people on, you know, YouTube and TikTok and whatever. I guess that secondhand information really applies to anything. I like this store, I think it's great and I'm showing it to you, but uh, I guess you can't really experience it until you come out here and uh, you know, uh, rub elbows with the people that work here. Solid store, great prices, just another example of another great place to go on Long Island. By the way, pretty decent price for this 3DS right here. I ended up picking up one new N64 game. The other N64 game I got, I actually had doubles of. So this is banished to the doubles grade graveyard. Now I'm not gonna lie, the very first time I went to Blast from the Past, I didn't uh, fall in love with it. But growing up, I was always what I would like to call a second impression kid. The first time you met me, maybe a little too much. The second time you met me, ah, that's just how Paul is. So this is my second impression of this store. Right off the bat, not bad. The prices are actually good when I'm going through their N64 games. So many of the reviews for this store on Google actually go into great depth about how nice the people who work here are. The last time I came here was in the middle of a weekend. It was super busy. And uh, this time, I was the only one in the store. So I actually had a lot of time to chat with the people who worked here. Flying back this footage, I regret not getting this VHS. I don't know why I didn't buy it. Their selection was very eclectic to say the least. And a lot of these stores that have a little bit of everything don't have a good selection of anything. The opposite was true here. Great selection all around. This is the type of store that if you're just generally into nostalgia, you should come here. And you should give yourself a couple of hours to just really go through everything they've got. This is a terrific store. They have so much neat stuff to look at. I'd definitely come back. Now, this game was in pretty bad condition and needed quite a clean, but it was a little more than half off, so I was really happy to get this deal, especially because I'm grabbing these to play. And I'm not gonna lie, this game was actually pretty rad. A very weird fighting game. I ended up getting one common game, that banger, and uh, repairing this game. I found a back that was a donor. Now, it's the end of the day, and we've got one more time for one more video game store. And you know, if there's a mall involved, I'm there. We're at the video game trading post at the Bay Shore Mall, baby. Now, earlier I said I was only going to go to one video game New York, but I ended up going to three. If I had the time, I would have gone to all four. What it really comes down to was how nice that employee was to that old man. I feel like sometimes good deeds deserve a reward. That one associate made it so I covered their store way more than I would have. And in case you're wondering, none of these copies of Scribble Knots Unmasked are the Green Lantern version. These toys were actually on sale at five below. I wonder what the deal is with this. They were originally like five bucks. 
They also sold a whole bunch of other stuff in this location, like uh, records and CDs and uh, VHS, which was pretty neat. And they also had a copy of Steel Battalion in box, in box. Like I've seen complete in box Steel Battalion, but never one with the box that the box came in. I recently got a Lynx adapter for my analog pocket. I'm really looking forward to having more Lynx games. They have so many copies of Titanic on VHS here. I'm going to buy all of them. This photo was just here. Another good store worth coming out to. I ended up picking up a copy of Castlevania. No, I didn't lie. I actually picked up every single copy of Titanic on VHS that they had there. And you know, the funny thing is, is that I have a basement filled with video games. And the only thing that is a cause for concern for my wife and family and friends is uh, all these copies of Titanic. 